we've got a bunch of stuff to see today, but at the same time, um, I don't want to just talk at you. Uh, it's nice when we have these kinds of less formal presentations because we can actually maybe start up a little bit of a dialogue. So unlike a workshop format where it is actually pretty regimented because you have to get through you know, certain steps at a certain pace and you want to try and cover a certain amount of material, these 60 minute presentations, just so you know, they're a little bit more like a TED talk so you don't need a laptop. There are no files for this particular presentation. So it's really about just talking about my process and then the questions that might come up um, from you uh, specifically to something you might see, we'll, we'll dive into some more detail. So let's just get started. Um, projector's a little washed out. We're going to do the best we can do um, with the equipment we have. So my name's Eric Sargent. Um, I'm uh, an online content producer, online training content producer. It's kind of a long title. What it means is that my job is to create content for, that is going to eventually be posted online so that you could self teach so that a lot of the stuff that you've seen here in Basecamp, it's great. A comment that I've been hearing over and over again is, oh, we should record more of these, or if you could put it into a PDF or a YouTube video, um, well, that's my job. So it's basically to take a lot of the stuff that we're seeing in Basecamp and <clears throat> be able to put it up so that eventually you'll be able to teach, um, walk yourself through entire professional workflows. So 10 years, I think that's hopefully enough that gives me uh, the, the confidence to be able to, to um, stand here today and, and, and really show you some nice work. It's taken that long to be able to create that body of work. Uh, the other thing I do on top of, of working in, uh, in the past 10 years of working in, in landscape architecture, planning and urban design, so um, beyond that is also teaching technology for landscape architects at Cal Poly Pomona, so not too far away from here. So um, obviously this is a SketchUp conference, so we're gonna talk about how SketchUp fits into the overall workflow. So it was really difficult to get a description. I know that some of you maybe thought, oh, I went to a class and it wasn't exactly what I thought it was gonna be. I'll tell you right now, it's really hard. We have to do these descriptions months and months in advance. And so, of course, some things change and some things get moved and some words get changed. So I'm gonna do the best I can do to sort of let you know, um, when I say a, a, I'm gonna go back here, a SketchUp landscape and graphics workflow because landscape architecture isn't just planting trees and tree symbols and CAD, but as you know, it's, it's the whole storytelling process um, uh, for environmental design. So it's actually much broader than I think this title conveys. Um, quick agenda, so a little bit of background. Um, not my background, I just said that in, in, in 30 seconds, but the background on uh, my process background. So basically how I think about uh, working with digital tools and how I move information from one tool to the other and how, of course, just in my short 10 years, that process is, is changed rapidly um, and continuing to, as you know, with the VR guys and gals that are downstairs demoing, it's actually changing as we speak. So this idea that, um, you know, what we think of process right now, of course, was, was, was not the same um, just when I was in school. So early process, basically a lot of the things I did wrong. Uh, I'd like to share those only because I think it provides some insights and I think it also tells us why it tells us, it tells me anyway, it taught me that, uh, well, maybe I didn't have the skill set back then uh, when I first got started. I had the, the desire to develop that skill set. So going back and looking at some of those sort of early mistakes and, and how it informed some more current work is, I think, um, some nice examples there. And then, of course, this idea of, of current process and future process. So, you know, what might be some next steps? What are some new things that are coming out specific to landscape, um, urban planning, and, and, and urban design? As we know, we have, because um, we have some unique challenges as landscape designers or, or even architects that are in the room that have to work with landscape, meaning we have to put our building on site, we have to bring in some vegetation, we have context, we have a lot of things that where we can't just build a, nice, a building anymore in isolation. So, so um, it's actually really, 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 really complex, and that's why I like it so much. The more complex, the better. Um, I just watched a presentation on Monday. I don't know if you guys were in Joshua Cohen's video. He had the exact same slide. It's funny. <laughs> Literally the exact same slide. This is when I graduated school. This is when... Um, this is when you know, something changed for me. This is when I actually start, learned, figured out what I was doing, and then, of course, where we are today. So I have to 
talk with him after him and I have a lot in common. So my point with this slide is the fact that, uh, is the fact that in 2000 when SketchUp first came out, um, you know, of course, I had no idea what SketchUp was, never used it. And 2006, as SketchUp became known to a lot of people, when Google finally, you know, pushed it and encouraged it and created things like location, terrain, being able to bring terrain in, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is really relevant. I was actually in my third year. So that was this fun tool to experiment with. Um, and we had, up until that point, not used 3D at all. Like, not once. Not encouraged to, not even, not even told about it. So it was really just us learning um, for ourselves. And of course, that was I like to tell this story only because um, that was the year that it changed, not just from SketchUp, but from technology. We literally had three of us with laptops in school that year, 2006 to 2007, the next year we graduated. So 2006, three of us had laptops. One of them um, is here, Chris Fulmer, who's an extension developer. I don't know if you've heard that name. So he was graduated in my class at Cal Poly Pomona in 2007. So Chris and I, it's funny, he had a laptop, I had a laptop, and one other gentleman who unfortunately does not work for SketchUp had a laptop. And then the next year, the entire class below us brought laptops to school. So that's how quickly it changed. But that was an interesting thing because we got to see the first three years of our education was literally drawing everything with markers. And the last year and a half, we were pushing, we were doing everything we can do to push out of that um, paper boundary or paper box. Um, so anyway, I, I think that's a unique perspective because I think that oftentimes we divide ourselves into camps. You're either old school, we did everything by hand, or you're new school, and, and you can't even draw. You don't even want to draw. You don't even want to learn to draw. And I think that middle ground, of course, is the sweet spot that I think we all really want to be at the end of the day. And 2012 wasn't really that interesting. I don't think people really associated Trimble buying SketchUp, but I put that in there only because that was the year I worked at a multidisciplinary firm. So it was architects, urban designers, and landscape architects, a team of like 12 people. And all of a sudden it was like, wow, I'm working directly with architects, and now I'm seeing how architects use SketchUp. And I'm feeding content into to an architect's model, or I'm pulling information from an architect's model. And that just changed how I perceived working with SketchUp because that integration was needed to be tight. Um, because a small team like that, you couldn't afford um, to have someone go and redo your, you know, redo your plan. So I actually learned how to use SketchUp in 2012. I shouldn't tell you that because that was not that long ago, but I guess I, it took me that long to use it. I used it improperly for that long. Uh, so if, you're, if it takes you a while to learn it, don't feel bad because I didn't really figure it out till then. And then of course it took six years. So it took six years between when I actually figured out how to use SketchUp to when I feel comfortable teaching it. So. It was a little bit wordy discussion. I don't know if you guys know what these are, other than birds. Messenger pigeons, and then with the little boxes they put them in are called pigeonholes. Okay, pigeonholes. Anybody work for a small firm where they had a irrigation guy? And all he did was irrigation. Okay. Uh, anyone work with, there was just one guy, was one gal or whatever, was really great at CAD details. I mean, they were like the CAD details master. They always did all the details. I worked for a firm like that, and some people might think, oh, I can't wait to be the details guy or the planting lady. I was the opposite. I was like, um, sorry, it skips ahead. Um, I was the opposite. I was like, oh, I don't think I could be the, I don't think I want to be the QA, QC guy. Oh, 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 I don't, you know, I definitely don't want to be the irrigation guy. I don't want to only do irrigation plans. I want to do all of these things, but then what I realized is, can you guys see, of course, the whole presentation that I'm talking on is what's the one thing that's missing from this that is really, 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 really vital to everything we do? What's that? Modeler. Modeler? Yeah, but remember, when I first started, um, sorry, t my first job, it was before SketchUp. So let's remember, this is sort of the traditional workflow. But you're right, now the modeler is, is now in there. Well, before modeler, there's the graphics person, right? Who's presenting? The, so we have to get whatever it is we draw, it has to be presented. We have to sell the idea. Uh, there wasn't them. There was the owner of the company who, who spoke to the idea, but they weren't always the one doing the drawings, as you know. So they would take credit for the drawings, but they weren't the ones doing the drawings. And so, you know who did the drawings? You know who did the, the, like a lot of the, the graphics? Does it, who did the, who, are you guys, can, how about a show of hands from a firm environment, people who, who's worked in a firm? About, 25, about 40% of you, and raise a show of hands if you're just a sole proprietor, you're just here because you're, 
Okay, so um, actually it's pretty good, about 15, 20%. And show of hands if you have nothing, you've, you've never done landscape architecture, you, you don't work in landscape architecture, you just thought this sounded interesting. Okay, so some of you might not know what I'm talking about, but hold up, but just wait, you will. Um, okay, so that was a lot of you that actually don't do landscape architecture. So they always give the intern, they always give the intern the graphics. Do you notice that they always give the low person on the totem pole the graphics? I was always floored by that. Um, it was good because I was the low person I graduated in a recession, so I was the low person on the totem pole for five years. No one, there was a hiring freeze. So I was, always, I was the person on the bottom for five years. So that was great, I got all the graphics. So, um, but you know what I realized was, is that there wasn't, there wasn't a role for a graphics and a presentation person. It just, you just give it to the intern because the intern doesn't know how to design. Um, and then I realized that you know, it's not just graphics, I, I like to use, sorry if I'm blocking you, just tell me. Um, I like to use a term, uh, I, I get it from, from advertising or from even storyboarding, because I used to be, I used to watch a lot of movies. It's not just graphics, it's visual storytelling or it's visual communication. So it's a much nicer word than just saying I'm just coloring a site plan or something. It's way more than just coloring a site plan. You know, the, the drawings that we, we use to communicate our design ideas are not just you don't just throw it to the intern because you gotta keep them busy. Um, so and that's me, um, that was me, basically. Uh, I found if I was gonna be pigeonholed into anything, it would be the one that I didn't even know was a, a real job. Um, have you heard this phrase? Everyone I think is familiar with this phrase. Show of hands think that that's a compliment. I, you, just because I raised my hand doesn't mean you have to raise your hand. Okay. Okay, not very many of you. Show of hands if it's kind of a disparaging remark. It's kind of a, almost like a double-faced comment. Okay, a few more. Yeah, I, I, it's weird. It's one of those things where it's like, is that positive or negative? I took it as positive, and I'll tell you, I'll get to that in a second. I took it as positive because in landscape architecture, I thought more is better. The more we can do, not just understanding design, but the more we understand the programs, the more we understand how programs interact with each other, and the more we can push, the more that we can get the idea out of a program, the better. And I think that, to me, that was like, you need to be really good at a lot of things to be able to do that, or to be really good at it. Um, so a quick overview. Um, I like to use alliteration, it just helps me remember things. So when I say process, process is really just more than process, it's process, it's the programs we use. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, we're tied. We're tied to programs. Uh, it'd be great to go back to the glory days, but we're just, we can't, we're moving forward. So our process now and our programs are intertwined. And of course the term, the word I used to describe the, the title of this presentation was um, deliverable, but another, another term for that, just to keep the alliteration going, is the product. So when we're producing, we're, we're a production team, we're, we are producing a product at the end of the day. And just real quick rehash, especially for those that haven't worked in a firm environment, when I started it was, it was hand sketch to CAD, maybe a little bit of Photoshop, maybe I had to clean up the edges, or maybe wanted to splash some textures on it, and then of course the, there was print. And when I say print, I also mean slideshow because it wasn't that long ago. We did do PowerPoints and things like that. So um, we also did you know, digital presentations. But for the most part, it was a pretty linear process. And of course, you know that you could take the hand sketch and you could go to print. So you could skip the CAD and, and the Photoshop. You could just present the hand sketch. Now, <clears throat> this is SketchUp conference. So what does SketchUp do to that process? For me anyway, it really messed that process up uh, because it no longer fit within the linear, this is where you start and this is where you end when I'm trying to create a set of drawings. It now says, does SketchUp come in at the end because we've done all this design work and the client can't figure it out and so we have to build a model or we have to, build, we have to get budget to build a model so we can show them? Or does it come in in the beginning someone does a quick napkin sketch, and I say, oh yeah, I think I get that, I'm just gonna model that real quick, and then I'm gonna take it into CAD, and then I'm gonna take it into Photoshop. So the answer wasn't really that clear, because I'll tell you that what, you know, being the, being the younger person, is again, we didn't get that direction. So the owners of the companies, they didn't have, the ones that I worked for, they didn't have a clear understanding of where SketchUp fit in that process. And this was, again, you know, um, 10 years ago, so um, of course now it's, it, it's changing. What happens when we add a bunch of other programs to that process? 
Now, I put the word more fluid. I'm speaking positive. A lot of people might say it's more complex. That's more time. That's more training. That's more cost. That's more problems. That's more incompatible file types. But I think that's more opportunity because when we have a fluid process versus a linear process, that's really exciting because now all of a sudden, um, now all of a sudden there really are no limits to what we can produce, how we can tell our story, how we can show our drawings off. And I just have to keep apologizing. It's, I'm taking a cue from the keynote today earlier. Jumped, kept jumping. I must have got the same one. It just jump ahead. Um, so now let's, you know what that did? You remember now SketchUp's involved, but I had SketchUp that was the same size circle as the other drawings. I used, you know, SketchUp was just, there was CAD and I used CAD most of the time and now I'm using SketchUp. I use SketchUp a little bit of time. The more I've been doing this, the more that SketchUp circle has been getting larger and larger. And, I'm, and I've, only, I've only been doing this for a year, so it's not because of the fact that they pay me. It's because, the, it's because I've, I've found that it actually works. So that's, that's the whole point of this presentation, to show you um, uh, why and how I think uh, this is the right direction to go. And why that circle, I think, is not only expanding, but is probably continues to be a, a major part of our process. Now, as an urban designer and a planner, we have to go out and scale. So we get things like, um, we'll get some GIS data from the city. We're looking at things like parcel boundaries. I want to see things like roadways, rivers. I need, I'm not talking about just a site. I'm talking about a city or a district. Well, that's where a program, I'm a Mac user, so I can't use ArcGIS. I use QGIS. So QGIS is a great. So I take this information from QGIS, and I, and I don't even know QGIS. All I know is that QGIS can take a shape file, which is GIS, and it can convert it to a, either a DWG, which is AutoCAD, or it can convert it to e EPS, which is Illustrator. So I know that SketchUp likes DWG, so I know that I can take a shape file and I can go, and I'm sorry, I should have put a little bubble off to, to grab CAD, because there is, you know, actually, no, you don't actually have to go through CAD. You just export to a DWG. So you, I'm, I'm correct. Um, and then, of course, I do whatever I want to do in SketchUp, and then usually it goes to a, a program like InDesign. I'm not gonna do all of the drawings that I do, I'm just showing you two for an example because I want you to know that that's this fluid process. Now let's take a CAD drawing. I did a site plan in CAD and I'm, let's say it's, a, it's diagrammatic, so it's early in the process. I wanna explode an AXO, put a splash of color, put some labels on it. Well, that's, you know, I might have a site plan, I might have some survey data. Well, I could take that information from CAD, bring it through SketchUp, extrude some stuff, find the perspective angle, choose whether I wanna show shadows or not, put in maybe some information, maybe I geolocate some other information, I can go straight to Illustrator, clean up the line work, you know, make some lines thick, make some lines thin, maybe put some dashed lines, and then again back to InDesign. And of course, you know, PDF sits over here somewhere. Oh, and um, please, you know, we've got time. I'm gonna go through these um, real quick, but I'm gonna try and leave time at the end, but if there's something that's just, you gotta stop me, please, you know, feel free to do that. Um, so now, if you look here in, this, uh, in the captions, the, that was the, that's the process. Those, and then there was the process of the programs, and now I'm talking about product really quick. I wanna talk a little bit about what I mean by product. And what I mean by is, think of all the different drawing types we are required to, to create. And I know I'm not doing all, I haven't shown all of them, but I'm trying to show as many as, as I can, or I have good examples for. So the context mapping, obviously that comes in first. A lot of times we have to show you know, where we are in the world and, and our, maybe our relationship to um, a downtown or a freeway or something. An illustrative plan, that could come in early in the process as part of an early concept, or it could be the final product. Sections, elevations, obviously, graphic design. I say graphic design because SketchUp, most, um, there's some really great graphic designers here. Did you, does anyone sit in like Liam Keatings or the guy that does the, worked for the movies, does the movie props? You can do some really amazing graphic design stuff with SketchUp, and, and I've tried to do more recently. Axonometrics, exploding axonometrics, SketchUp's great for that because everything's on layers, and you can just pull everything straight up. Analysis diagrams, perspective renderings. Perspective renderings, I left that one for last because that one, to me, has uh, is always been the most challenging, the most thrilling, um, and I want to talk a little bit more specifically about the perspective apart from some of the other drawings. It's just this perspective has always held my attention. 
Axo, sorry, that was short because I didn't have room for axonometric. So um, oftentimes, like let's say we're um, just kicking off a base, but you need to see height in relationship. But if you do height in perspective, something really far back might be really small. So you do axonometric, and then allows you to layer information on top of that. So. Again, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Um, this is a context diagram that ended up in, in, in uh, as part of a, a pitch book to a developer, to a client. And um, you're just again, you have to forgive me for being washed out because you can see that this is all the parcel line work. So this is an example where I took GIS line work into SketchUp and I didn't want to deal with Illustrator at, the, at that time because I was going to clip and mask and I was going to extrude. I knew I was going to do other things. I, was gonna, I thought I might, I wasn't sure, was I going to tilt it or was I going to be in plan view? I knew Illustrator was going to struggle with some of that stuff. So I just brought it into SketchUp and I did all my diagramming in SketchUp. Not all of it because, you know, the text came in later from, um, from a um, um, InDesign. So um, illustrative plans, something that, um, that I used to do a lot of. Uh, so I got a lot of practice. And then again, starting out, never ever using SketchUp. And the more I can get from SketchUp, the richer my plans became. So this is one that's more recent. And so you can see, I'm just gonna, um, um, there's a lot of detail. And I'll say that a lot of detail came from the SketchUp model. Um, I'm zooming in, okay, because again, there's a lot of detail. So things like what um, building heights here, this is a tower, there's no way to know that in plan view. And I, there's no way I want to mentally rack my brain to figure out how far the shadow needs to be and then draw that manually, because I used to do that and that was really tiresome. So if I can get SketchUp, if I can get shadows from the SketchUp model, I'll absolutely do that. And I'll show you in the, later in the presentation how to break those layers apart. Um, and I'm just, I'm just drilling down into more detail here. So all of a sudden, of course, you see I couldn't do this without Photoshop, so the textures and things didn't come from SketchUp, but all of the e edges and all of the, even the trees may have come from SketchUp, and I, will, I can swap them out, the symbols. So, or I can add a texture, or I can add some depth to them, you know, once I get into Photoshop, but it's a great starting point for me. I could not create a drawing with that much detail if I didn't have some stuff um, helping to push it in that direction. So, you know, uh, um, so I'm just going through really quickly and just showing you how SketchUp has influenced each one of those products, those deliverables that, um, uh, that I had mentioned earlier. So section elevations, I may still do a lot of the plan material. Uh, remember, this is early on, so I'm, I'm, this is all still, some of this is recent, but a lot of this is early on. So the plan material didn't come from SketchUp. That came from Photoshop, but anything I can get from SketchUp, um, I would use. So the building would come in from the architects. I would do a screenshot. I'd match the scale. I'd bring that in, and then I would build information up above that, and that really helped speed the process up because I didn't have to think about where everything is. And um, just, you know, moving through graphic design, I downloaded a streetcar from the 3D warehouse, and I just did hidden line mode, exported it as EPS, which is Illustrator, and then I was able to build um, to color and build up some more layers on top of that. So each one of these, this city planning diagram was the basis for a whole series of placemaking icons that actually got put onto LA, city of uh, um, LA Metro. It's in their website as part of their transit supporting supportive planning toolkit. The cool thing about this is I wasn't just doing the icons, I was actually doing a lot of the, some other parts of how the transit supportive planning toolkit could be applied. So I was using my same model information, I was just extracting info from a model that I already had that I was using for other things and I just, you can see it's a little hard to see but you know this is streets and blocks and this is multi multimodal um, and this one is um, Again, you know, active transportation, those kinds of things. And AXO, again, for axonometric, so I would just, sh I would just shoot a, an axonometric, and then I would just, lay just start layering information on top of that. So in this case, this is about um, uh, autonomous vehicles for, um, it was, uh, uh, this was, of course, before I really did a lot of research and realized that it might not be a great idea, but we were looking into opportunities, like, uh, for park and rides. Um, um, how would we transform a space? And we didn't really want to design all of that, so what we did is we just sort of modeled a very basic, what you'd call a transit park and ride with a parking structure, and we put all the information in on top of that, and what could happen if the parking structure one day, what if you don't need it, you know? What if we don't, we're not parking in it? So it provided, and then of course, when you zoom into the model, and you have these little vignettes, these little moments that happen that you can start describing these goals and objectives. 
and of course, more uh, of a traditional um, exploded act. So it's just you know, using SketchUp um, to try and explain that there's all these layering and there's these systems that are going on. Um, and that you know, if I showed it all in one plan, you, you, it would be really hard to read. So we want to be able to, to put those things in their own layer groups and break them up and, and let's talk about each one by themselves. This one's really washed out. Sorry, the line work's really thin. But this is analysis diagram. So this is looking at wind, solar on the top. So those are just shadows being exported from SketchUp. And then that's using a plugin, which I'm, is called Solar Angle. I think it's called Curic Sun now. I think it changed, or there's a new one. So this is this idea of you can get so azimuth just straight from SketchUp, which of course I was doing, before SketchUp I was doing it, I would go onto a website and I would download, I would do a, a PNG snapshot of what the solar angles were. I'd bring that in and I'd trace. I trace each line. Now it's like I can use SketchUp for that, so that's great. Sorry, there's two questions. Uh, can I grab him first? Oh, well. I've done that. I'm not showing you those examples. I've done it. I've done everything you see here are the ones that I think worked well. What I'm not showing you is probably the 500,000 drawings I did that um, either didn't come out as great or I wasn't happy about because I had to do it like painfully um, backwards. There is, an, and it changed. I did this a while ago. It used to be called like solar angle or solar sun angle, sun calc. I think it was called sun calc. And then now I believe it's called Curic sun. So don't quote me on that because I haven't done that in a while. But I would, I would say, yes, you can generate azimuths and, and things about where you are specific to your geolocation and the time of day and the time of year. So, so, so this was really interesting. This was actually part of a student project where I was trying to explain, I was trying to teach them how to up their game, how graphics and analyzation they happen at the same time. So we don't just do an analysis diagram and then it looks terrible and then I have a hard time understanding what the analysis is. That is there a way that we can simplify? Can we, can we just get to the bare bones? You know, I don't need an aerial image. I don't need a bunch of text. Can we just get to the, straight to the point? So I was trying to give them just a little bit of a boost in that direction. I don't know if it worked or not. Um, and of course, I think I already showed it another image. Um, I just, I'm just sort of reinforcing this idea of analysis. So using a SketchUp model as just a base plan and then bringing in all the things that are the unseen things. So the stuff that's not actually in the model, but they're the design ideas that we have that we're using the model as the basis for communicating these design ideas. And so this is just, uh, sorry if I trip, there's stairs right here. Um, and then the last one, this is the last one of the, what we would call our typical deliverables list, which is the perspective rendering. And again, I left that one for last because I have the most fun with these. And I also get to do them the least. And I think it's probably that, you know, it's the thing that you want to do more of, but that's not your job. Like my job is to do a bunch of other things, but I, this is what I really want to do. So I do it anyway, even though I'm not asked to do it. But um, like to do more of these. So this is, um, this is just a little um, project, and sorry I don't have a photograph, but this is in Napa, and it's a, it's a building that's called Family Food and Drug, and they're, um, they want to turn it into like a food market. And so we took this building as an existing building, I forgot to put the photo in there, and then um, run a quick little render pass over it. And then you can see the difference between if I was just to present just the SketchUp model, or if I was to run some magic tricks and hit and, and, and press my magic lighting button, um, and you get something like this. And as you know, visualization is huge. I mean, half of the vendors here are either VR or they're real-time rendering or they're rendering plugins, photorealistic rendering plugins. So this, unfortunately, um, landscape architecture has always been, in my opinion, about 10 years behind the industry. And I think with some of the new technology, I think they could close, if they haven't already, I think they could close that gap really quick. I think they are closing that gap really quick. And so, um, and so as a landscape architect, it's nice because I'm not an architect, but, um, but, I'm, but as a landscape designer and as a urban designer, it, what are, are we selling the building here or are we selling the, the experience that people are gonna have? And so, and I'm picking on architects a little bit just because sometimes we, get, we forget, you know, we're selling, we're, we're worried about skins you know, the skin is gonna be aluminum and it's gonna be really cool. And, and at the end of the day, what we're really selling is, is, is an experience. And that's why I really, really like doing these kinds of drawings. Um, I try, anyway, to sell an experience. Um, that was a really quick overview of all the different things we can do with SketchUp. 
if I wanted to pause here, if there's any questions, it's a good time because what I'm going to do is we're going to travel back in time a little bit and we're going to walk through what I call the awkward years of before SketchUp. Oh, this last one? Uh, this is SketchUp with the trees are a plugin called LabWork. It's a German plugin, and what it does is very low poly. So all those trees in there are very, very, very realistic looking trees, but the model, it does not know that they're there, so they do not bog my model down. So I can put as many of them in as I want. And then I send, when I send it to V-Ray, which is a photorealistic rendering plugin. If I'm blocking you guys, just tell me and I'll. So I send it to V-Ray, and what V-Ray does is it recognizes those trees. So while SketchUp doesn't know the trees are there, V-Ray does. And that's great because it does not slow my modeling or does not slow the design process down. Because as we know, vegetation in 3D is like a death it's for our models. And I'll, I'll plug this, I was gonna plug it at the end, but on Friday, for those that are, have the energy, at 9.30, we're doing, I'm doing one just on, on, on uh, vegetation in SketchUp. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the pitfalls, the, uh, the options, the very many different options, and of course, with the fact that we want to get the highest quality with the best optimization. So what we want to do is we want to balance optimization in the model with the highest quality we can. So that's Friday at 9.30. The, the trees are called lab work. It's L-A-U-B-W-E-R-K, it's German. They're not very expensive. It's a free plugin, and I'm not paid to promote them. I'm just saying that it works really well for the way I work. Um, I also will say that there's not a lot of great vegetation components for SketchUp Mac users. So I do plug it because there's really very few options. Um, oh, and then um, the other plugin was, was V-Ray. That was the, for the rendering. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought I saw one behind you. Did I not see one? Okay. Yeah, there it is. All SketchUp. So it's V-Ray that makes SketchUp look better. So you guys have all heard this. Raise your hand if you said, oh, I don't like the way SketchUp looks, especially with landscape architecture. I don't like such, I think we should all raise our hands, yes. So that's part of the problem. Now I've done everything I can do to push how good I can make SketchUp look because there are a lot of times where we should only, we don't need to photorealistic render anything. I saw some great presentations. They don't render everything. I think we should do everything we can do in SketchUp. But, but there are times where SketchUp doesn't give us the look that we want, especially with um, vegetation. And that's where I think we need to, as, as design community and as visual storytellers, uh, visual communicators, understand what the tools are. Doesn't mean you have to be personally the one who does it, it just means that you are aware of what your options are and you can decide, you can make a, a good decision about whether that's something you wanna do. I saw one. What other extensions? That would be a, a whole presentation on its own, but I will say that um, we are gonna do several, because you're right, um, the question was what other extensions do I use? Um, there are some other ones that actually work really well together. So I will show you a few at the end, and then we'll go into detail on Friday. Resources as in training or resources as in like I want to buy the plugin and I want to put it into my SketchUp? Well, like for example, if we all haven't been here, none of us would know about LabWork. So other than, other than that, how would we find out about stuff like that? Uh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you stumble across it. That's how I find every, I'll tell you right now, every single thing you see here is self Taught. And when I say self-taught, I don't mean self-taught, I mean self-stumbled upon. Because somebody else put a video up, I have to give them credit. It's like Obama said, you know, he's like, I'm not taking credit for this. There's so many people that have been in my life that helped me get to where I am. Absolutely, you stumble across it, and then you stumble to one. It's kind of like, I call it like Alice in Wonderland, it's like falling down the rabbit hole. I think once you get, you know what I mean? Once you get close enough, it's sort of like Wonderland opens up. You see a lot of good stuff in there. I think you're just, if you're on the edge though, and, or if you're like 
afraid to drink the tea, you know, then you're not going to get, it's going to be much, it's going to take you much longer. So part of my job as an online trainer is to help you. I would say the forums right now are still the best place. You go to the forum, post a question, I, you'll get 20 responses in, in, in a half an hour. So if, if, don't be afraid to post, even if it sounds like a stupid question, just post a question, say, where can I get photorealistic trees? The ones I'm using look like crap. Sorry, I'm just going to check the time really quick because I want to go. Okay. Uh, we've got half an hour. Half an hour? Do I have half an hour? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I think we can be close to halfway. So, great questions, but let's keep going because some of those I think will be answered, and I'll try and save some time at the end. Okay, so early process. I'm going to go through these really quick because I cringe looking at my old work. Okay, so um, I think it's important, though, because, you know, we never really look back, do we? We always look forward. And I was like, if you keep... What do they say? If, you look, if, you, if you're only looking back, you trip over what's in front of you. But I, I don't think... All right, I'll, I'll stop there. So this was a SketchUp model. This was one of my first, like, early, early SketchUp models. Not one of my first, but, you know, the first early years, like the first year. And I, I only just built this staircase. This was a water runnel, and it was running alongside of a staircase, and it was really hard to see and plan because each runnel, there was several layers. There was the step, there was the edge of the runnel, and then there was the bottom trough of the runnel, and so you, had, you actually had things on three different levels. They just could not figure out what was, what was going on. It was a little bit of a complex design. The runnel itself had these pieces that would go into the landscape. So I just modeled it really quick. Of course, I had no clue how to do vegetation, so I used um, Photoshop. I did that for a long time because I was afraid. Remember rabbit hole? I was afraid to, uh, to go down that road. I felt, well, number one, I felt it was impossible. It was just not possible. And then number two, even if it was, I was just, I was too busy doing other things. I don't have time to invest into making my vegetation look good. So. Um, this is another one. I did a lot of these. It's just a SketchUp model. You just kick it off, throw some splash of color on the top of it, call it a day. This is one where I was getting a little bit more complex because we did have to work with an architect. They kicked off a building. So they had gave us a building. We did a design. It was an existing campus, so we had to figure out how it fit into... We had to figure out how everything came together. It's the same project. With, it's the end of the runnel. So the runnel goes up the stairs, and then it spills into the plaza. Um, this one here, this is probably the one that at least sat in my mind of why I should not be doing this in Photoshop anymore. So this is basically, I just pulled these walls, I just extruded these walls. This is a really interesting roof deck. That's why the walls were extruded, because it was on podium. And then the plant material, again, I had no clue. The plant material was really, the planting design was like really, really detailed. And so what I went ahead and did is I literally put the planting design, every plant, over where they would actually go, and I looked up what the shape of each plant was, and I found a Photoshop symbol of every single different plant, and I picked a different color for every single one, and I placed every single one. I would not recommend doing that. Um, and the result is, it was okay. At the time, it was good, because, you know, it was the best that I could do at the time. So I was happy, but, you know, looking back, I just, ugh. I don't even know how they let me work on it that long. If I was in charge, I would have said, okay, you've got... I'm going to give you 15 hours, and if you've gone past that, I'm pulling, we're giving it to someone else. But I probably have spent 40 hours on it. So um, this is a ground-level view of that same shot. So it really started pushing you know, how I understood how I represented vegetation in um, using, again, a, a very simple SketchUp model. I'm talking SketchUp model without even any textures. That wood was Photoshop. So there was not even a texture in SketchUp. I was af just afraid back then. That water is Photoshop. And then here's how it, it looked when it was built. And I like to think that maybe the drawings help. You know, I'll go back and forth. That's the, uh, it's in Bellevue, which is why it's wet. Bellevue, Washington. Okay. So there's the, probably too far away. There's the, the rendering, and there was the construction. So um, pretty true to life. Um, plants were just, just came in, so, you know, it took a while for them to get mature. But I would have liked to have gone back, you know, two years later. I worked for a company that actually um, someone I used to work with here um, also worked for this company where we did resort design. And we, the rendering was the most important thing. I mean, it didn't matter what stage of design we were at. They would do renderings. I'm talking photorealistic renderings, like six of them. It's like, we, we don't even know. We, we don't know anything. I, I don't know how tall this is, and I don't know what plants are going where, but they would want a rendering anyway. And they'd usually want it in like six days because it was working in the Middle East or in China or something, and the timetables are like, if you can't do this in six days or you can't do it in eight days, then we're going to give it to somebody else. And so we'd say, okay, 
Let's do it. So now, they worked on this one in particular for a while, and they could not get it. I, I'm sorry I could not pull it up from the archives what the version looked like before, but they could not get the vegetation right. And so we went back and told them, we said, just render the buildings. Don't render any landscape. Let us do that. Because we were so, like, I mean, it was a, this was this idea of this tranquil, like, oasis garden with the water and the vines, and it was really, really, this, this idea was not coming across. So we told them, we just said, stop. D let us do it. Um, or I convinced my manager to let me do it. I don't know if they told me to do it. I think I said, let me do it. Um, I don't know if that was the right move or not, but that was the after. And so, um, um, could I, you know, could we do a better job in photorealism if we if we really worked with the render and we went back and forth and we we marked it up and we told them we showed them a plant palette? Could we have gotten there at the end of the day? Yeah, probably, probably. But that's a lot of work, and uh, you know, it's a lot of work for me to do it in Photoshop. It's also a lot of work for me to like hold the render's hand because the render is, you know, as you know, I don't know, has anybody worked with renders doing sending your landscape design to a render and have you ever got it back and thought these trees are not right? Raise your Okay, it happens a lot. I get somewhere and it's just like, oh, this palm tree is like subtropical and we're in Mediterranean. It's not, it, we, no, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. Sorry. Um, again, just a little enlargement, just to kind of show grain and texture. Same thing, and I'm going to go through these really quick because uh, it's overkill. But the same thing. This image was not about the building. This image was about the entry, and the entry was about where it was. It was in the mountains in Dali, China, and so it was sits just way up high, and it's surrounded in like vineyards and farmland and cherry orchards, and there's these great big mountains, and it's misty and foggy, and it's not about the front door of the building, because the building is actually only one story. It's almost like meant to disappear. So I said, well, let's hide it. So I hid it, and I don't, you know, because that's what I do, I shrub it up. You guys ever heard that term, shrub it up? <laughs> I shrubbed it up. Did it again. This one was really interesting because they, it was supposed to be sitting in a mature forest and next to it on the down part of the slope was a amusement park and they're putting a new hotel next to an amusement park. And the, um, <clears throat> So the, the amusement park wasn't operating, so it was almost like ruins. So there's like this old ride and the trees were like old growth trees and it's like, it's a lot of work for a render. But I'll do it. Sorry, skipped it. Oh, where did it go? Oh no, did I delete a page? Oh, bummer, you have to use your imagination. Is it online? Yeah. It's on my website, sorry, it's on my website. Yeah. Okay, if you guys are curious, I have my website at the end. Yeah, sorry, I was shuffling some pages this morning and just close your, eye, close your eyes for a second and, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so not just renderings, but plans. So early in the process with site plans, none of this there wasn't, no one did a model for this one for us. This was this crazy, 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 crazy idea of putting a lazy river on top of a mall in Macau. I guess it's Macau, maybe it's not crazy, but here it would be crazy. And I said, we went through all this trouble. And again, the architects modeled everything, but remember, landscape architects, 10 years behind, they didn't model anything. I was like, how are you not modeling? There was subfloor levels where the lazy river couldn't go because the way the ceiling was going. So we, had, we worked out all these sketches. And at the time, I didn't have the confidence or the skills to model it. I did, actually, but I didn't present those. It was just more like study models. And so when I did my plan, I had to do it all in Photoshop. And now I look back and think, well, it's a pretty good plan because I, I, uh, I think color-wise it, it looks good. But, you know, the rocks are feeling a little flat. Um, there's no, you know, as the pool gets deeper, you know, the, the, you would see the shadow of the pool as it gets deeper. I get that kind of stuff with the model. I can't get that. Current process. Do good on time. So I hope you have some questions. So I might have some time for questions. Um, current process. Current process, I say current, and I don't mean current because you know, I'm doing SketchUp stuff, um, training, I'm doing training, but I mean current as in like relatively recent, so that was you know, several years ago. This current process stuff is more like, um, how do I take the skills that I learned having to do everything manually in Photoshop, and, but I actually do want to use SketchUp more because I do know there's a lot of value, especially when you're doing a section cut and someone says, that's great, do another section cut. Or they like, that looks great, but can you do a section and a perspective? So you know, the more stuff we have in the model, at least the more, the more ability we have to do, I'm gonna do plan, I'm gonna do section, I'm gonna do elevation, I'm gonna do ground floor, and I'm gonna do AXO all from one 
um, design all from one model um, versus having, um, otherwise, you know, what they would do is they would say, well, we only have time to do two sections or we only have budget to do two sections. I say, well, is that the right thing to do for the design? Is that the best way to tell the design stories, to just do two sections? Um, I say that with my son, you know, you want to do the bare minimum? You know, what do you, <laughs> he's nine, he's always trying to do the bare minimum of everything. Is that, the, is that the best thing to do? Okay. So current process, sorry, just making sure I didn't skip a slide. Current process, so current process is saying, I'm not gonna let go of that Photoshop stuff, because I think a lot of it worked really well, but I'm, I also learned a little bit, so I wanna take some of the stuff where I learned, like the, the gradations, and the softness, and the layering, and all of the things that the landscape, I think that us landscape designers really focus on, and I wanna bring that in, I wanna bring that more into the 3D process, and I also wanna make sure that I'm not the only one who can do it. Sorry, hit the mic. I wanna make sure I'm not the only one who can do it. This is not a specialized process, I'm not like, it's not proprietary, you know? This is something that I work on teams, so when I use I, I'm, I really mean we. This is stuff where I have to feed somebody else something and somebody else has to feed me something. So the more I can get this stuff working well, the more efficient we can be and the more I know that these things are tried and true, the more I know that the people I work with, I'm gonna bring them up as well. So it's not just me showing off. This was a model where we had, I think two weeks, but uh, production, one week was like, coordination and like ideation and like we had literally had a week to build an entire city master plan as part of a proposal. So think about the proposal process now as you know has gotten more and more competitive. It's almost like we're giving away the farm in the proposal process but um, you know we spend $30,000 sometimes going after or $40,000 going after a project if it's a big project. This one's in, um, I can't really give any details about this one because it's, um, I think there's an NDA on it but I'll say that they, they needed, uh, um, this was a very challenging project. It was a site on a slope. It was a very, very um, sensitive project. It was culturally sensitive. So there was this idea that, you know, we're not just coming in with our, just our, our ideas and we're gonna ram them in. We wanna make sure that we're really understanding um, the process. And then of course the landscape, the buildings were very important, but how the buildings sit in the landscape and how they face the street and how it worked with the climate was also really, really, really important. So this was a sketchup model that I built, not the buildings, remember it's a team effort, so that they would feed me buildings and I would handle the master model. So I basically handled everything and people would feed stuff to me. So I did the ground plane, I did the trees, and I did the entourage. And then the buildings would, when they changed, they would um, say, oh, you know, gave you a new building, change it. And I said, okay. So definitely a team effort. Um, now this one I did not render because um, I was managing the entire site model and we had to do seven, we had to do eight renderings and two site plans and uh, um, narrative diagrams in a week and design it. So I, there's no way I would even want to, actually I thought I might be able to do the eight renderings and it turned out really quickly that I was biting off way more than I can chew. So what I did was I became the facilitator. I don't have to render everything. I don't have to put everything in there. I know the process so well. I should be coordinating a small team. So what I, we worked really, really, really tightly as a small team. I fed a, um, an internal renderer, because uh, external would have taken too long. We had a week. So I, f I fed an internal render all the SketchUp files and what he would do is kick back um, a raw render pass. So didn't spend a lot of time with materials, didn't spend any time with people and entourage. And then um, didn't even have to think about where trees were gonna go. I did all that as much as I could for him so he could just focus on kicking out the renders as fast as he could. Cause I mean, they literally take, I mean, they take hours just to, just to crunch. Um, and then of course, after he did a rendering pass, I would do my old school, I want to change things and so I'd go back in afterwards and I would add, so some of these things would be rendered. So I would render, like in this case, I would actually go back in and in SketchUp, he used 3D Studio Max, but I'd go back in and SketchUp and I would put in all these other elements and I would just render just those. Because remember, it's the experience that I'm after. Um, so some of it's Photoshop, some of it's SketchUp. And at the end of the day, it's all coming together to create a, um, hopefully a, a really compelling um, set of visuals. And that was just one of, of the eight. Um, How do you keep those viewports aligned when you're using multiple different softwares? Like the same perspective that you're showing here, you're feeding your render or something else. How do you keep that same? 
oh, yeah, how do I keep the viewports if other people are using different software? Well, not very easily, but I do, um, we, we feed a SketchUp scene and we, we, we export a still. So they have both the still and the scene. So what they do is they, they basically camera match it. And then he feeds it back to me and I check it. And if it's okay, I say okay. And if it's not, I say, you know, we need to fix that. And so what he does, um, and then what I do is I bring his raw render, even if it's not finished, it's, it could be an interim render, he'll, bring a, he'll give me a raw render, I'll bring it into SketchUp again as a watermark. And I have that scene now, so now what I can do is I can have the watermark in there so I can see his render and I can see my model at the same time. So what I can do is I can make those fine adjustments and I don't have to worry about like his tree, like his tree might be a broader canopy than my tree, so I just wanna make sure I'm, I'm sensitive to those things. The nice thing about this is, you remember how I showed that diagram? We used to do linear and now we have to bounce back and forth. A lot of people don't think, they say 3D Studio Max, you know, and Lumion, these are these programs, they're terminal programs, and they are, which is why I don't use them. So somebody else might use them, somebody else might use 3D Studio Max, but that's where he stops, that's why he only does renderings. I, I don't wanna just do rendering, so I don't use a Lumion and I don't use a 3D Studio Max, I use SketchUp, because I wanna do a lot of different things. In just this one? Um, well, this one was, I mean, we, we, he would give me a material ID layer, so I could do, um, I could use my magic wand, so I could select areas. So a material ID is basically like no textures, it's just like simple colors. So I'd get a material ID and I'd get a raw render, and then I'd use my own SketchUp line work in case I wanted to um, mask anything or, or, or clip anything or highlight anything. And then I would run um, my V-Ray render, and then I'd run my Photoshop edits. So I don't know. Five layers, or layer groups. But remember, the same project at the same time, we had to do a site plan for it. And luckily I'd done so many site plans, by this point in time, I wasn't worried. In fact, they actually wanted to take it away from me, and I, and I let them only because they were worried that I was trying to do too much. But like, I'm really anal retentive, and I said like, I don't want you to take it away from me. Um, I'll just, just let me, I mean, I'm happy to work as a team. I'm a good team player, but I'm like, no, don't take it away from me completely. Um, because, I, because I don't think, because if you give it just to the graphic designers, no offense, the graphic designers don't have that intimate knowledge of the project, the cultural sensitivity, the vegetation, the, uh, the, the street, the, the way that we arrange the street trees. If I give it to them, I've got to now coordinate with them to get it right. Um, so we did actually, we did let them, we did let them do um, most of it. But then I, at the very end, I said, okay, well, you have to give it back. I need it back. And so what I did, and I just wanna show, because remember, this is a SketchUp conversation, not a Photoshop conversation, so I do wanna make sure that I'm, I'm showing SketchUp as much as possible. These are the buildings exported from my master file. These are the building shadows exported. I like my shadows up, some people say down, because it makes the drawing feel top heavy, but up is accurate. I think that's good, so. Um, these are the roof, these are the buildings in color because there's a lot of stuff happening on the roof. So I want the buildings in black and white and I want the buildings in color. And then I want my tree pattern. And I wanna talk about trees being a landscape nerd. That's important, it's important. Um, these tree symbols, once we spent the time, to, once I spent the time to lay them out, I was also at the same time thinking about the render because we needed to make sure that not only were they different components so that when they swap them with theirs that they update, they all update correctly, but we also wanted to make sure that they understood which ones were which, meaning that which, what was the design intent for each one of them. So we had what was an accent tree running down the main spine, a typical street tree. We had what you might call residential and courtyard trees and we had this existing tree massing. We definitely wanted those to stand out. And when you look at it, when you just squint your eyes, I'm hoping if we did it right, you can see, do you see that center spine with the yellow trees running down the middle? And you see that really dense existing tree massing. So the trees were um, definitely not an afterthought. Inside each tree component has two layers, a 2D tree in plan view, just a simple circle, and a elevation tree. I did not need to put a 3D tree in here because A, the model was already getting pretty heavy, and B, I, they told me I wasn't gonna render it, so I said, great, I'm not gonna put 
3D trees in, like the whole lab work tree that I just mentioned. I said, fine, you don't want me to do it? I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna leave these really simple, low poly face me trees in. So I've got those two different trees, so, that, so if I'm taking a perspective or if I'm taking a low camera angle, I'll use the elevation, and when I come up, I switch to the 2D symbol. Saves me a lot of time. If something changes, I just turn and toggle the layer on, I re-export it. Now, of course, remember, these trees in SketchUp, you know, I did the best I could to find nice trees in SketchUp, but of course, those are 2D trees. So what I did was I had to make sure that, um, I had to make sure that the, the renderer knew the design intent. So I went ahead and found some trees that were non-SketchUp trees, and I said, here's what the tree looks like, here's a 3D tree I'd like you to use. And, um, and he did a great job. I, he did take some artistic liberty, but you know, I'm happy. If you take artistic liberty and it's better than what I said, I'm like, go for it. Do it, change it. Um, but for the most part, he stuck to this palette and it, and it was great. So back to trees, these are the circle, these are just the simple circle trees in plan view. Those came into the um, Photoshop plan. Now, when you export tree shadows though, you have two options now. Remember, we have two symbols. We can export the, um, we can export the elevation tree and that gives you, you know, sort of a, canopy, depending on how much detail is in the tree, it might actually be um, this really interesting canopy shape. But, and that's great for small site plans, because you actually maybe want, you can see that level of detail, but when you're doing a master plan, you know, you zoom out, that's actually adding a lot of almost like busy information. So I tend to prefer when I do the master plans uh, to find what I call hybrid style. So it's not photorealistic and not a diagram, it's somewhere in between, and it actually is, um, um, something that I'm, I'm really hoping to continue um, to do someday. So basically these are the circle trees in Photoshop and you just apply a drop shadow to them. And now you've got some very simple, very clean shadows that actually read better in plan view. And it works really well with all of the textures and stuff that, that's coming on. Um, try this again. Um, obviously there's some aerial information. Let's not forget where we are. Skip over that. So I guess that you know where we are now. Um, so bring that in, and again, I like to just push that stuff to the back because it's about the plan. You know, I want the context there, but I don't want it to, to override what the design idea is. So we'll bring in a, um, this is now with some Photoshop coloring. So this was the SketchUp export. So this is exporting just the ground plane and then throwing in just, you know, like you can see the water has some ripples in it. So, you know, just doing the bare minimum of like texturing to sort of break down the flatness of that SketchUp because Love SketchUp, love it, love it, love it, love it. It's pretty flat, as we all know. It's pretty flat, I mean texturally, it's texturally flat. Only one minute? You're supposed to give me a 10. I didn't see it, I was looking this way. One minute, great, okay. Well then you guys, we're gonna have to sit. Oh, after this presentation, um, I'll be down in the, yeah, sorry I missed that, sorry guys. You're just gonna, um, I'm gonna flip through these, plan view. I make custom components now, something I didn't used to do, so I'm really enjoying like creating patterns in SketchUp. This idea of creating sculptures and furnishings. Um, so this idea that like uh, I went ahead and just made, you know, we could not find that on the 3D warehouse, it's a welcome figure, there's no way you're gonna find that on 3D warehouse. I just make it, I don't have time to look. I'll make it in 15 minutes and it'll take me 45 to find it. So that's it, I've got a minute, I think I could do this in a minute, um, and if you guys have to go, obviously I understand. Um, future process, it just means that I don't stop, and I'm, not, I'm sure you guys, you're the same way, we don't stop, we're still tinkering. I'm using scatter to create photorealistic stuff. I love breaking down the perfection that you see in these photorealistic renderings, so creating ivy walls, rendering ivy walls, I'm gonna extend over here, I think maybe that's, so just this idea of how can I put ivy, how can I put grunge, how can I texture my, my uh, models better. This is a program called Sculptress. This was my first test with Sculptress. I made a face. Uh, and then I textured the face. And then I brought the face, and then I exported the textures, and I brought it into SketchUp. Wow, cool, I can do baked on layered textures. I could never do that before. You can, Sculptress. And then, of course, I, now how does that relate to landscape architecture? Face doesn't, that was just my test. The fact is, is that you can actually sculpt terrain, you can Photoshop paint textures on, and then you can do, I don't know why it's doing that, sorry. And then you can bring it into Photoshop, those green trees are lab work. Run it through V-Ray, press my magic render button, and now all of a sudden you've got all of these things working together, terrain, 
texturing, trees, softness, lighting, basically all the stuff to remember early in the process, all the things I couldn't do and wish I could, I can do that now. So I'm gonna end and I'm gonna take extra time, sorry. Jack of all trades, master of none, that's actually an abridgment of the original quote. Jack of all trades is better than none, but often better than a master of one. So hopefully um, you learned something new today and uh, thank you guys and gals very much. So feel free to reach out. My job as a trainer obviously is to you know, be active in the forums and to help people. So if something you saw uh, struck a chord, just send a line uh, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. <laughs>